Okay. Hi, everyone. Je m'appelle Avichai, mais je ne parle pas français, so we will do it in English, as this is what I can speak. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having the energy after lunchtime to come and listen to another uh, technology kind of, of a discussion. Um, I'm a developer for over 20-something years. Uh, I've worked in different companies like HP Software and others. Some are big like HP, some are small. So I, in the last 20-something years, I had the, the opportunity to go through different technology shifts uh, as we grew our industry or the way that we are developing software. Uh, what we can see in all the, 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 the years that we are developing software, that once we understood that it's good to have software for our usage, we are trying to provide functional software to our end user as fast as possible. This is the aim of all the technology breakthrough that we have along the way. And uh, uh, when we are going through the different uh, methodologies, this is exactly what we try to do. Bring working, good working software that brings value to the end users so they will use it and they will be able to work with it properly. I'm coming from a company called Lumigo and, and we are a SaaS platform dealing with uh, monitoring serverless applications. So, so I'm, I, have my, I have my hands deep inside the serverless world and I'm coming from uh, uh, microservices and dockers and stuff like that. Uh, and along the, this, this uh, talk, I will try to show some of the differences or, or go over some of the points which are important when we are talking about monitoring our applications. As developers, we must make sure that uh, we are monitoring our application properly. In a minute, we'll discuss exactly why. And um, I will try to cover in, in this uh, talk uh, why we need to monitor, what's the idea behind it. It's kind of obvious, but we need to remember the basics uh, uh, and therefore we'll understand how we should do it properly. Uh, we'll talk for a bit about the evaluation of cloud infrastructure. Uh, we already started to hear about it uh, in the different sessions this morning. Uh, when I'm when I'm keep saying, uh, talking about serverless, I can assure you that down the, 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 the next uh, months and years, uh, whenever you'll go to a technology conference, you'll hear a lot about serverless as it brings a lot of value and, and we'll try to touch base on that and understand exactly what, what is the story here. We'll talk a bit, what are the important things that we need uh, uh, to monitor when we are working with, uh, with Kubernetes or, or, or in a Docker and Kubernetes environment and uh, We'll discuss what is the change with serverless. Why, why is it di any different than what we're doing uh, with the Docker's or if we're already practicing microservices, how it changes. Okay, and then we'll discuss how it is being actually worked. So first question, who is using here uh, Kubernetes in production? Many. Who is using serverless in production? Few. Who is trying serverless? Who knows what serverless is all about? Nice, good audience, I like it. Okay, so um, let's, let's start and, and, and just remind ourselves and, and put a solid ground on what we are talking. What, what is the transformation that we have seen in our uh, world of infrastructure? Now, actually, uh, if we are thinking about transportation, in the past we used, if we wanted to get from one place to the other, you needed to have a car. You were responsible for, for owning it, for putting in fuel to maintain it, to navigate, to get, uh, and, and then to drive all places. Then came the rental car, and all of a sudden, all I need to do is put in fuel, uh, I don't need to own it, and still I can get to, to where I want and uh, uh, exactly wh where I want to co go. Now, when we are talking about public transportation, then uh, we just need to know where we should go on the train or the tram or where we should go down uh, in order to get to our destination. And when we are ordering an Uber, a taxi or something like that, all we need to do is to say, hey, I want to get to a certain point, 
this is my goal, okay? I, I don't care about ownership of cars, uh, maintaining fuel and stuff like that. So the whole idea is the focus on getting there. Now, it's very obvious in our transfer transportation uh, concept. When we are thinking about our cloud, oh, sorry, when we are thinking about our compute environments, it's, it's very similar. In the past, we used to own our physical service. We needed to put the hardware. We needed to put the operating system. We needed to patch the operating system. We needed to, to, to make sure that we are putting our code over there, and then things might work for us. With the world of virtual machines, VMware and other things that gave us virtualization, we didn't need to, to own the, 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 the hardware anymore, or we could better leverage and use the hardware that we have. And uh, we, were, we, we had less things to, bar to be bothered with as we are building our applications. When we are going to containers, I don't care even about the operating system, right? Because when I'm provisioning a container, it already has everything that I need, all the dependencies inside of it. And, and I, all I need to make sure is that I have uh, the right environments in my Docker. I need to make sure that I have the ability to scale up, OK? In the world of Kubernetes, we, OK, I have different nodes. And in every node, I can put certain pods. And I need to make sure that, I, that uh, all the pods are running and I can have enough pods and, and, and stuff like that. And when we are talking about serverless, I don't even care anymore about the runtime about, and about the scale. This is the responsibility of the cloud provider, of Amazon, of Microsoft, of Google, uh, of IBM, Oracle, whoever. Uh, I'm using the cloud, they are responsible for that. And again, it's about focusing on the business logic. So as we discussed, it's the ability to move from dealing with a lot of things. Uh, sometimes it's really fun, you know, in, in the old days, uh, just the, the ability to, be able to, to put, you know, uh, uh, I think 10 or 15 years ago, I knew how to install an Oracle database and configure it to work properly. And back then, I thought it's a job security for life because it was not that simple to do it with Oracle. But with the years, right now, nobody cares about it. Developers today don't care what is the database. They have a managed service. They are sending the, the data. They are getting, they are retrieving the data, doing everything about it. And they are focusing on the business logic. And as I said in the first sentence I started this discussion, it's all about business logic. We need to provide the, the application to the mobile device or to the car or to what, wherever we're using it to the end user to use them. This is the whole idea. Now, OK, we did this transformation uh, uh, in the infrastructure on the way we, had, we are provisioning our application to focus on the business logic. So monitoring, why do we need to monitor uh, uh, everything that we are doing? Now, the first thing, it's health. Know that everything is working properly, and if something is not working properly, I'll better know that. Some of the e-commerce sites, every minute that they are not active, they are losing money that, of revenue that they can generate. Uh, so we must, they must make sure that it's running all the time. The same goes with, with, uh, with the search engines uh, and the ads and, and with the navigation. All these kind of applications. Today, when you are looking for a flight, you are going to a certain website uh, to buy your ticket. If it r responds properly and it works, then you'll book your flight or you compare the prices, if you're not getting an answer, you're moving to a different website. You are not waiting for it to work. So the vendors or, or the, the, the organization that owns this site must make sure that it's up and running. Now, when something goes wrong, we need to understand the business impact. Sometimes we have services which are not critical, not business critical, and if they are down or they are not working at the speed that we want, it's not that critical. And sometimes it's, it's something that, that can cause us a lot of damage. So understanding the impact of uh, the problems is imperative, and this is one of the reasons for monitoring. Knowing that I have high usage of CPU somewhere without understanding on a certain C uh, computer or, or VM or whatever, without understanding what is the consequences of this high CPU, what it in influences, it, it means nothing. It's, it's just doing a work for nothing. And when there is a problem, 
I'll better be able to troubleshoot it and get to the bottom of it as quickly as possible. Uh, and as we have more and more data, we have big data words, we have different buzzwords that we are using, we have streams, we have events, we need to be able to find our way between all the data that we have. Okay, so this is the, the basics, you know, of course it's, it's in a nutshell and, and we can dive into each one of this and, and talk about the theory behind it even deeper, but this is the concept why we need to do it. Now, when I'm trying to understand uh, uh, the health of my application, the first thing is about alert. I need to understand and I need to decide exactly which alerts I want to set. If I'll set alert on everything, I'll be drowning with hundreds of alerts. Always something is not working somewhere in my system unless you have an application of 50 lines of code. When you have a, a big application, when you have a microservice application, when you have all these distributed pieces running around, something is not working at a certain moment, always. If you don't believe me, you are welcome, I'll show you and we'll monitor any application that you want, any application that you're running and you're saying it's 100% perfect, I'll show you that there are some problems, okay? now. Sometimes I have uh, out-of-the-box metrics or, or things that I'm monitoring which make sense, like CPU, like memory, like networking, if there is any bottlenecks. And sometimes I need to have more specific metrics uh, that helps me to, 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 to understand better my application or my environment. And of course, like anything that we are doing, like when we are writing testing, then we need to maintain the test, otherwise they are breaking and they are giving us no value. The same goes with alerts and, and uh, uh, alerts of environment. We need to maintain these alerts. Things are changing, they are dynamic, and, and they are not always uh, uh, that smooth for us. So this is a, an example that I have. Uh, this example right now, it's, it's, a, it's a microservice application. Specifically, the icons that you are seeing are coming from the world of serverless, of AWS serverless. Uh, and I have a problem at a certain lambda, a certain function that is not running properly. Good, so I need to understand the first thing we said. I need to understand what is the business impact, okay? So if I have two services right now, there are many more, but if I have two services, one of them is processing payment from my customer, and the second one is sending me a Slack message when my lunch arrives to the office. It is important to know that your lunch is coming to the office, but processing the payments from the customer is a bit more critical for us. So I need to understand uh, this alert, where is it going to? If it's for my lunch, Never mind, I can deal with it tomorrow. If it's for the process payment, I'll better deal with it very, very quickly. So I need to start and go upstream, and I need to build the services back. Now, when we are talking about a distributed world, we are in a microservices conference, when we are talking about different pieces of code and managed services running around, understanding the full picture is not trivial. You have many components that you think that you are using, but you are not. They are just there, they are orphans. And in other cases, uh, there are many pieces that you don't know that they are working with each other. So we need to build a picture, and this is a picture of a real, inv a real environment, okay? It's a real application, uh, it's coming from uh, from a blog by Jan Troy. If you don't know him, I strongly recommend to, to have a look at uh, the, uh, his blogs and, and his data. Uh, he has a website called The Burning Monk, where he's sharing a lot of information. Uh, other than that, he's working with us uh, as developer advocate in Lumigo, so I'm a real fan of him. He's, he's a cloud hero, of, of, uh, he's a serverless hero of Amazon, and he's really a guru, regardless of the work he's doing with us and I strongly recommend having a look. So, okay, so, so now I have this picture, and now I need to understand which one is, is really impacted. So I need some kind of a method to draw myself the, 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 the full picture, and what is the path of the error, so I'll understand that this is a process payment thing, and, and I need to deal with it, and I need to deal with it quickly. Now, the, the next part is I, I need to debug. Now, the fact that I'm getting an error here in this lambda doesn't mean something is wrong in this lambda, in this function, okay? The, f the problem might be anywhere upstream, because, and in a, in a, I'll show you a demo at the end, and I'll show you exactly how it works, if I, I should get some parameters to this lambda in order to work properly, and one of the components above is not working properly and is not sending the right variables or the right parameters, then I'll have the crash here. But 
I will not be aware of it until I'll get here. So I need to be able to go upstream from a problem. Oops, wait a minute. No, I moved too fast. One, two. Okay, in a minute I'll see it. Okay, so I need to make sure that I see everything. Now, what we see here, uh, it's a bit small, I'm sorry for that. I thought, uh, I don't know what I thought when I created it. Uh, uh, this is the, the CloudWatch uh, metrics, okay? This is the Amazon uh, uh, environment to see problems. And over here we can see errors, okay? There is a spike here of errors. So I need to go and drill down and understand what exactly what's going on. So I'm going in, if we're talking about the example here is on Amazon Web Services, okay? So the right place to go is to CloudWatch. And CloudWatch is where you can see all your logs of all your different functions. So there are many, many, uh, there's a lot of information here. Uh, it is blurb from where you're looking probably so you don't see, but there is a start and an end for every event that happens. And I need to understand exactly what what's going on and what is the correlation between the time uh, and understand what is the time that I'm looking for, okay? Now, as I said, I need to be able to, to, to find the exact log between all the different log groups and, and, and see exactly how it works. And in order to really build this kind of, of view, you need what is called distributed tracing. Now, if you are not familiar with distributed tracing and you're going into the world of microservices, I strongly recommend dive into that. There are very good uh, uh, publications and, and uh, content about it. Uh, look up distributed tracing, you'll see a lot of things. But in a natural distributed tracing is how can I cre understand the flow between different components in a distributed compute environment. Okay, this is in a nutshell. Okay, so as I said, in CloudWatch, you're look, you looking for a log group, and in the log group, you need to dive in and say, OK, these, these are the logs that I need. And it is very difficult to find it, because I need to find it by the timestamp, and it is a hassle. Uh, and uh, uh, now uh, Amazon added uh, uh, CloudWatch Insight. If you are not familiar with it and you are using this environment, I strongly recommend you can create some kind of a query. There's a query language, so you'll be able to pinpoint to where you want to find your things. Still, it's tough. It's not that trivial to do. Okay, so let's talk on some of the points uh, when we are talking about Kubernetes. Now, in the world of Kubernetes, we have five layers uh, that we need to monitor and we need to be aware of if we want to be efficient with it, okay? So the first part is, is the, the, the infrastructure itself, understand the, there's the CPU and the memory and the networking and be sure that we are monitoring this environment. Then we g we're going one level up, we are going to the cluster level, and we need to understand that all our clusters are working properly. On top of the clusters, we have the nodes, and then we have the pods. So we need to make sure that the pod is actually working. Uh, and if, uh, you know, if I am deploying a pod one, uh, and I'm trying to add additional uh, uh, containers to a specific pod which are not functioning properly, it's going to be quite challenging, and even after I did everything and, and the pod is, is probably is, is deployed, not always it's available, and there are many, many reasons why, from network to, to other kind of things that goes within the, the Kubernetes environment, and in general, I need to understand the application. The, the, the bugs that we're creating as developers are, are at the end at the, at the application uh, level, so we need to have a look at it. So there is one very good environment that helps us find our way in, in a Kubernetes environment. Uh, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with it, with the uh, Prometheus, and if not, it's, it's time to get acquainted. Uh, it gives us the ability to, to have a look. To There are agents, and, and it, in Kubernetes you can do it, uh, there are some defaults that you can simply set and you'll have it as part of your of your uh, nodes. Uh, uh, I have my Kubernetes uh, nodes. They are sending data in a specific data structure into my server. It can be saved, okay, for persistency. If I want to query it afterwards, there is a good uh, uh, query language for this environment, so I'll be able to, to create uh, the right kind of questions when I want to understand what's going on. And I, they ha there is an alert manager that automatically sends uh, alert out when something is not working properly. And the same goes, the, the ability to visualize in uh, Grafana, which is a very good visualization tool, that there are defaults. You can simply log in and do uh, uh, look for the, the right dashboard and you'll have it. Now, we are getting 
in this kind, in, in the Grafana, in this kind of, of scenario, we are getting a lot of information, but it's about the cluster. Okay, we are talking about a lower level. Now, yes, as I said, we need to make sure that we understand all the five levels, but. Here we are talking about low level, and we need to make sure that, uh, uh, that the, uh, the, the basic, that this is working properly. It will not help us to debug an, an application, okay? It will help us to understand the health of the infrastructure. Now, uh, another uh, concept there is the, around the service mesh. Uh, IBM is pushing it very strong these days. Uh, Isetto is, is a very good tool to do that. It gives you more visibility about the networking between the different components or the different nodes that you have. Uh, and when you, so, so this is a, a higher level. And when you want to go to your application itself, then the, the ELK uh, is the most common uh, way to try and understand and find your way uh, around your environment. I'm sure that most of you are familiar with it. Different way to, to, to take out uh, the logs from the application itself, log stash or something else, uh, and then throw them all into an elastic search uh, server, and then you can do different kind of queries and monitoring around it. So, we can say that for different levels of what we are using, we need to use different kind of tools in order to monitor them properly, okay? This is a nice drawing created by Spotinst uh, uh, about different tools in, in the landscape uh, of the Kubernetes. As you can see, there are different tools that help you on different places when you want to try and monitor that. Okay, so, so uh, have a look on the different things that you want. If you want security, uh, I'm well familiar with the Aqua solution, Aqua security, which is very good. Uh, uh, and in the other uh, parts, uh, you can see that there are, there are different tools to do it. And you need a tool. Without a tool, you are going to, to get lost. And there are so many logs out there uh, that it will be very difficult to find. Okay, so. I want to jump now to the other side for a second, so we'll be able to, to compare them. And, and I want to talk for a second about serverless. So what is serverless computing, or fast function as a service, as, as we are calling it? So it is built of a set of building blocks that you can simply use. Uh, my example is on Amazon, but the same, I can show you exactly the same from Google, from Oracle, from uh, Microsoft. Uh, everyone has their own name, uh, and just for the co uh, to be persistent, I, I selected to do it on a specific thing. And we have here uh, we have here different storage uh, types, like like S3. We have the database DynamoDB, the more the RDS and other things, uh, identity management, different queues, SQS, SNS, uh, uh, Event Bridge. Uh, there are many of them, uh, and the idea is that we have components, manage components, that all we need to do is give them data and do the right setting and use them. And we have the functions, the lambda is that the functions to glue things together. So at the end, it will make uh, uh, sense as an application. So I'm writing my code in Lambda, and it can be in, in Node.js, it can be in Java, in .NET, in uh, Python, Go, whatever. And I'm using the different tools, the different managed service, to build my application. Now, serverless is changing the way that we are working in, in several ways. The first thing is that from microservices, we're moving into nanoservices. We're talking about very, very small pieces of code uh, that can be provisioned up and down, very scalable. Uh, but uh, it's a lot of, of components running there. Typically, the best practice is talking about asynchronous kind of calls, uh, uh, and the, the environment is keep changing on me. So as a developer, uh, I need to have the ability to get the right view on what I'm doing. Okay, otherwise, I'm, I'm going to get lost when my, my application will, will be bigger. Everything is being managed by the cloud provider now. All we are dealing right now is at the application level. Everything below the application level is not our responsibility anymore as developers. So it makes our life easier. On the other hand, uh, it, 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 ch it gives us some challenges. In a minute, we'll talk about it. And the cost paradigm is changed. Until today, even in the world of Docker and Kubernetes, we are talking about resource, the cost of a resource. How much do I need to pay in order to have some resource available for me? When we are talking about serverless, we are paying uh, the cloud providers by milliseconds. 
Uh, so if I'm using, we're paying for the CPU and the memory that we are consuming per milliseconds. So if I have a function that runs for 0 0.001 uh, a second, I will pay on only for the right portion of it, okay? And that gives us a granularity where I can understand exactly the cost of every transaction. There was a request, a, a user click on, on his mobile device, something happened, got to my server, went through different components, and then I can understand exactly the cost of it, and it gives another benefit that I can do development and design by cost, something that was much harder when we were t talking about resource only. Okay? Makes sense to this point? Are you falling asleep because you're after lunch? Do you need the coffee break? We can't have it right now. Wait! <laughs> okay, so with every good thing, there are some new challenges. So we're just shifting the challenge from one place to the other. So, uh, in the world of, of serverless, identifying a problem and then uh, resolving it in such a distributed environment that this is true to serverless as a microservice environment and to other microservice environments, uh, it is very hard to understand exactly when something goes wrong and where and why it went wrong from. Uh, another, op as I said, understanding the cost. Now I have the ability to understand the cost, so let's see if I'm doing things in, in, the, right, in the right manner or, or the wrong one. And the most difficult one is visibility because it's very asynchronous, okay? I have a function that is calling another function, that is calling another function, that is calling another function, and then I have a problem here. So I understand that maybe it's upstream, it's over there. But when I look over there, there is nothing because it's asynchronous, everything went down. So we are talking, uh, you know, as a developer, I started developing many, many years ago in C. Okay, and when something went wrong for me in C, I looked at the stack trace, I saw exactly the memory, I saw everything, I was proud, I was able to pinpoint what went wrong. In a serverless world, when you're looking back and looking for your stack trace, there is nothing. There is nothing you can look at. So we, we need to find a way how to understand the environment uh, and make sure that, that we have the right visibility to that. So monitoring in a serverless world, it's a mess. Now, I want to show with you three practices uh, how you can do that, okay? Option one is use out-of-the-box CloudWatch and friends uh, uh, within the AWS environment. Uh, uh, and this is the example I showed you uh, earlier. I'll go over it uh, very quickly again. Uh, we can do our own things inside our code, and, and we'll discuss how to do that. And we can use tools to do that. Okay, so these are the, the basic things. This is true for every problem we have in computer, by the way. Always there is something out of the box. It never covers everything. Then we can do our own work or we can do a third-party kind of, of solution. So with CloudWatch, as I said, as I shared, we need to understand uh, that we have log groups. Okay, we are diving into the log groups of CloudWatch. Then once I understood which, which uh, log group I need, I'm going into it, then I need to go one by one by one until I'll find it. I need to go by the timestamp, and if I have different components in different places, I need to do matching. Uh, otherwise, I will not find my way. So this is challenging, this is not simple, it takes a lot of time, it's doable, okay? The majority of the world, this is the way that they're working uh, uh, today, uh, and, and it's, it's working. Okay, uh, diving in, uh, uh, and uh, as I said, in Insight, you can even do some queries and understand exactly what's going on. So the good about it is it's out of the box. You don't need to do anything to, to pay additional money. for. You do need to pay additional money for it, but it's neglectable. And uh, you have the, the support from AWS if in that environment, and if you're in Azure, then you have Microsoft support. So you have strong people to, to help you, or strong companies. Uh, the, the, the drawbacks is that it's very complicated and it takes a lot of time. And as I said, everything that we're doing in our compute is in order to provide business logic to the end users faster. So if something is taking me more time, then I lost the basic idea of what we're trying to do in our improvement or selection of new methodologies of computing. Now, um, there is no event correlation and, and it's hard to understand the business impact. The fact that I see a log with an error, okay. What is it related to? How, how can I understand from the log that it's written uh, uh, bad in vacation or, or, or something like that? How can I understand what really went wrong? Okay, so let's go to the other option. The other option is talking about 
creating your own solution. In order to track and trace things in a distributed environment, we need to, to add correlation idea to everything that we are doing. So we need to build, this as an example in Node.js, but you can do it in any language, of course. You need to create, uh, sorry, the, the, the correlation idea, some kind of a function to generate for you a correlation ID. Then you need to pass it through the diff your different functions. So in every function, I need to make sure that I'm adding my correlation idea, okay, and call the function as part of it. And if I want this to, in, in, if I want to trace it and understand what's even went back to the log, then I need to add it to the log. It's written here, console.log, and then I'm sending all the data into that. By the way, you are more than welcome to send me an email and I'll send you the slide so it will be easier because I, know, I see that it's, it's difficult to, to see everything. Drop me an email, I'll send you the, the slides. Okay, so it's doable. Uh, uh, and then when you're looking at the logs, then you can look for the specific correlation idea that you were looking for. And it's, it's a good practice. Uh, and you can find it much quicker. But, um, where is it? Oh, of course, and before that, before the bat, there are very good tools uh, to help you do this kind of thing. This is all about the, the distributed tracing that I talked about, the, the Zipkin and, and Jagger and open traces. Uh, uh, they are very good tools you can go in, and they will give you a very nice view of your components. This component ran for that duration, and then that one, and that, and you can understand the progress of your application. Okay? So, so, so this is a good solution. But, so, first of all, the good thing. The good thing is it's tailored exactly to our environment. Many vendors uh, uh, are already supporting the different kind of tools and give you some kind of assistance with them. Uh, and there is no specif specific cloud. So if tomorrow you'll move your application from Amazon to Microsoft, you will not have any problem. It's a very nice sentence. I completely don't understand it. I never saw somebody taking really a huge application from one cloud to the other. It, you, you simply do a partial kind of thing. So you're not moving, sh lifting and shifting anymore. But I don't know. Maybe for some it makes more sense in some scenarios. The problem is about it that it's very high touch. You need to do this in your code. You need to put it, all your developer needs to make sure that they're doing it, otherwise it will not work. Now, in a world where you have managed services, it will not work always. If you're using a DynamoDB database, where would you put the correlation idea? As a field in the table? It's not natural. It's, it's not data, it's metadata. In S3, when you are storing a file, where would you put the, the correlation ID? So when we're talking about managed services, it's, it's a bit more uh, complex. Um, sorry, wait a minute. So, so it's a very good solution, but it's intense and, and it takes you a lot of time to do it. The next option is to use something out of the box, a, a, a special tool for that. Uh, typically, they are SaaS, they are solving the different challenges that we talked about. Uh, the good about it, that the, in this case, that they are serverless focused or on serverless and microservice and, and, and Docker's and Kubernetes uh, uh, focused usually. Uh, they are giving you a lot of information. Uh, the problem is that it's another tool. So now I need another tool, and I need to put it, and I need to, to use it. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure that it will be that good. OK, so I want to show you a very, very brief and quick demo, because I don't have a lot of time, because I talk too much. OK, here it is. It is. Yes, OK, so big. big. OK. So this is an example, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, I didn't thought that the f it would look like that, so I'll try to. This is an example of, of, uh, of, of, uh, of a monitoring tool for serverless. OK, I can see all the different errors that I have. Uh, I, I can zoom into places where I have errors if I look what I'm doing. OK. I don't see a thing. I'll switch. OK, so one of the options is uh, uh, this kind of tool implementing uh, distributed tracing. It builds for us the, the tree of all the different components. I can see in red already the problematic components. When I go into them, I'll be able to, to better understand what's going on. These kind of tools typically uh, 
show me all the, 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 the requests and the, the environments, and it creates a kind of a virtual uh, stack trace for me, so I'll be able to monitor it. Uh, I wanted to drill down a bit more into that, but because the, um, the visual is not that good, I will not do that. And if you want to, to understand this better, touch base with me, whether today or, or in a different day, and I'll be more than happy to continue the discussion on that or on other parts of the presentation. Uh, and, and with this kind of, of a tool in a world of a serverless environment, okay, when the, it's so difficult to create it, uh, uh, the tools create for you the distributed tracing, it provision automatically, uh, the, the, it collects the data, it goes over managed service like S3, like DynamoDB, like SNS, SQS, so it builds you the full picture of what's going on. And then debugging with this kind of thing is extremely simple, and you can understand your cost, your cost uh, exactly uh, at the same way, in a very good way. I'll jump back to the presentation because the demo was not a success uh, in the font that I created. Okay, so what are the different things that we need to remember when we are thinking about uh, monitoring a container environment, a Kubernetes environment, or an, and when we are dealing with uh, a monitor and monitoring a service environment? So the first thing is that uh, the, the owner of the monitoring is it's, it's us, it's, it's the developers, or, or if you have a DevOps in the organization that is doing it, but it's our responsibility to do it. Uh, the amount of things that you need to monitor in a Kubernetes environment is high. All five levels must be monitored. You don't know where the problem is coming from. If you monitor only one of them, you will get to the wrong conclusion for the problem, okay? In serverless, we're going, as I said, to the next step. More things are owned by the cloud provider, and now only the application level, is re you are responsible for that, okay? You are measuring the cost by the resource in a container world, in a Kubernetes world, and by request in a serverless world. Uh, and the main reason for, for the changes and the difficulty in the serverless world, in the containers world, you can put an agent, okay? Most of the monitoring tool put an agent uh, uh, inside the docker, inside the container or, or somewhere like that. And then uh, it is very simple for that agent to collect the information and send it out. In a serverless, as it's ephemeral environment completely, you don't have where to put your agent. You, you don't know where it will be run. It, the, w when you're calling it, uh, uh, the cloud provider takes the data, runs it, and then it destroys it. So in this environment, uh, you need to do the distributed tracing concept of correlation. Otherwise, it will not work for you. So as my time is almost up, let's talk about the, the takeaways. So the first one, Kubernetes, all five layers must be monitored. OK, if you're not, then you'll be challenged. Uh, in order to, to control your environment or to monitor a microservice environment, you need distributed tracing. This is the methodology. Okay, this is how we are doing it. Um, okay, th there are many challenges in this environment and we need to make sure that we are using the right kind of tools to do that. We, are gathered, we gathered a lot of information about it for everyone uh, and uh, uh, you're welcome to, to go to lumigo.io, lumigo.io uh, blogs. No, I have it. Oh, here. And, and we have a lot of content that we wrote. It's technical stuff, okay? There is nothing about the product there. It's just about the, the, the technology. Uh, as a developer, I like to go to blogs that tells me the technology side and not telling me about the company. If you want about the company, go to the homepage. Um, other than that, we created, uh, we are creating a lot of open source kind of, of things that we are sharing in our GitHub. Uh, and there are many tools here that will help you in this environment. They are free, open source, uh, sorry, you can use them. Some of them will help you understand uh, uh, if, your, if your functions are working properly, if you are using the right configuration. Um, enjoy them. Uh, there are many of them, and we are building more and more. There is one that analyzes the lambda cost that tells you exactly what is the cost of a specific function. There is another that tells you about the, um, the, the, the setting. If you are, because you are being charged by 
the memory consumption in the CPU, then you can select what is the memory allocation that you are giving your function, and the cost will be different. And this will help you to, to, to do some kind of, of uh, understanding around this environment. Okay, this, this is the, the, the GitHub uh, repo that we are using. Um, as I said, most of the things that we are writing are being written by this smart guy who is a serverless uh, hero by AWS. Uh, he's working with many companies and, and he's helping uh, with, uh, with uh, sharing the knowledge. And, and if you want to try out these kind of things, you don't need to talk to anyone. You can go to lumigo.io. There is trial click it, you'll have it, you, you'll use it, you don't need to talk to us. If you want to talk to us, we'll always be happy to have you. Now, um, now it's the time that you need to think about a question, and of course we'll look for the first person who'll be brave enough to ask the question, uh, uh, and in English and stuff like that. And before that, we will do something very important to me personally. If somebody has a problem that I'll publish it afterwards in my Twitter, let me know. It's a crowd uh, uh, selfie. Now it's the time for everyone to say serverless! Yeah. Yay! Let me see. Wait a minute. I don't okay, you can go home. Uh, uh, so, if you have any questions uh, uh, or if you want me to remove you from the picture, let I'm, I'm very good with Photoshop. I, I can change your face completely. I, I can make you look different. Just let me know. Um, if you have any questions, now is the time. Going once. Going twice. Yes. Yes, th thank you for the talk. Uh, I like very much how you can visualize the whole setup of functions, which can be very big as far as I've seen in other conferences. My question is uh, a bit unrelated to your uh, product, but it has to do with the same complexity dealing with it. Uh, is there a, a way to uh, edit uh, and uh, uh, change the, the flow of the data between functions in an easy way? Or, uh, I mean, how is the state of the art right now for configuring uh, serverless functions? Uh, how much uh, time is involved on setting up each function and linking it to the other one? Oh, so, so it's, it's not that difficult and, and the ability is, uh, you know, it's, it's API based, it's very API based. So uh, you can uh, uh, use specific, uh, uh, you can have direct calls, which is one option uh, between the different functions and then move between them, uh, uh, whether it is a JSON file or, or something like that to, to share data that you need. Uh, you can use, you can store things in a shared, in, in a persistent kind of, of place like S3 or DynamoDB or something like that. You can use all sorts of streaming uh, that will go to the right place. There is the ability, to th there are tools uh, where uh, of uh, uh, subscription where you can pub and subscribe to, to this publication uh, like, like SNS, like SQS, like EventBridge. Uh, and, and in some cases you can decide the, the component can decide who is it calling for, or the other side away, he can say, here is a statement, or here is a data file, and the different components say, hey, I want to consume it. Both directions are working, it is very, very simple. The problem in this world is not how to call between the different places and, tr and move the data, the problem is to understand when something is not moving right. Uh, then uh, it becomes a chaos, and it is very simple to debug a distributed environment when you are one developer. The minute you have two, three, five, twenty. Uh, in HP, we worked on a pro product that we had three hundred developers working on the same product on different microservices, different places, without something that will create for you a visual map. And I'm not talking about a person sitting and trying to update a visual document or something like that. It never works. It, it never update. It is never updated. Uh, uh, but but you need some kind of a thing to do that. There is another tool from AWS called X-Ray uh, that helps you understand the correlation between the different components. The problem with X-Ray is that it doesn't know how to move across uh, um, managed services which are asynchronous. So if, for example, you have a function that is putting a record in DynamoDB in a database. Now, in DynamoDB, there is a DynamoDB trigger, it is called. When the data is changed, something might trigger and call a different function. X-ray doesn't know how to connect between them, and maybe because of the first function, the data that you entered, something is not working down the stream. So the moving and the calling is simple. There are discovery tools as well. Understanding, 
if, some, if something is wrong, this is the challenge as I see it. Maybe somebody else will think differently. Okay? Uh, any other questions? We have at least 30 seconds until I need to go away. Yes. As I can see, uh, can you hear me? Yes. As I can see, you are uh, deep in the world of tracing. Are there any standards or uh, emerging standards in this world of tracing? Yes. The, the distributed tracing, is it's, it's, a, it's an open... Uh, uh, Oh, sorry, I, I'll repeat the question. The question was if, if, if there is any standards around the tracing uh, uh, in the world of computing, right? Did I get it right? Yes. Okay, so, so uh, uh, open tracing is an open source standard uh, that is uh, built by many, many companies. All the big companies are in there. Uh, and there is a concept how a message for tracing, for distributed tracing should look. What, what are the different kind of things that we have? In general, the idea is that we have, it is called SPAN. Uh, where you are sending out a, a timestamp and an understanding of what happened in that specific function, and you are sending it, okay, I'll go in a minute, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you are sending it uh, to a central server, and over there in the server you are collecting all the spans from everywhere, and then you can create an understanding of your trace. Otherwise, you cannot find it, it's really di difficult, but there is a standard, it's not something coming from a specific company, okay? Okay, guys, so you have here my, my details, my email, my, my Twitter. Uh, I'm here for the rest of the day. Uh, feel free to come and continue the discussion uh, if you want to further discuss. Uh, uh, if you want to see what I currently showed you uh, is about uh, how to do it in a serverless world, the same capability we are now launching. We have it uh, uh, for a Kubernetes world. If you need it, drop me an email to avishai at lumigo.io or to info at lumigo.io. Tell me. Kubernetes tracing, what, how can you help us? Uh, we'll, we'll add you to the, to the program. Uh, and uh, with, it, with this, I want to thank you for having me today. If you want to continue the discussion about uh, serverless, uh, at the end of the session tomorrow, I'm, I'm flying to, to Stockholm on Thursday. There is a serverless day in Stockholm where I'm presenting as well a different story, something completely different. Uh, I'll be happy to see you in Stockholm as well. Thank you, everyone.